This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Teens Radio Show. I've run websites since 1996 and have used over a dozen web hosts in that time. Agoristhosting.com is the only one that hasn't broken my heart. Agorist Hosting's uptime and service is stellar, and their DDoS mitigation is the best I've seen. That's important because if you tell the truth in this world, you'll ruffle feathers. No matter what the haters hit us with, Agorist Hosting keeps our websites online. If you have a mission-critical commercial presence or a world-changing activism site, go with agoristhosting.com. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. Everybody's got to have a plan, so, right? Everybody's you're a respect. zombies fan. What, what's your favorite zombies movie? And then I'll tell you mine. It's kind of like um, uh, you show me yours, I'll show you mine. Yeah. Ooh, all right. I like where this Don't is going. Uh, <laughs> getting real weird on Seeds of Liberty. Right, I may just step uh, out my for favorite a bit if you guys recent... want to have a like you know a little menage a trois or something about this. I don't know. Ooh. <laughs> Everybody's got to have a plan, so, right? Everybody's got to. You're have a respect. zombies fan. What, what's your favorite zombies movie? And then I'll tell you mine. It's kind of like, um, uh, you show me yours, I'll show you mine. Yeah. Ooh, all right. I like where this Don't is get going. Me with the good uh, <laughs> getting real weird on Seeds of Liberty. <laughs> right, I may just step uh, out my for a bit if you guys recent... want to have a, like, you know, a menage a trois or something about this. I don't know. Ooh. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 99th episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, the Seeds of Liberty podcast is covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. So we are back again. I am Jeremy, joined as always by Dave. We have I'm op- partying like it's a uh, 1990 or like it's episode 99. There you go. Holy botched my joke there. Yeah, uh, that's all right, Dave. <laughs> we, we 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 knew what you meant. Uh, <laughs> we have we have Andre here again with us this week. Andre, what's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, guys? It's always a pleasure to be on. All right. And this week, our guest is David Lucart from the Zombies Government and You podcast. Hey, David. What's how's going, going on, man? Uh, living the dream. Thanks for having me on, dude. I love the show. So this is very cool to be on. Oh, well, no problem, man. I mean, uh, I'm, a, I'm actually a big fan of your show, too. So <laughs> and right. I've, I've, been I've, got it, man. I've got it added to my my catcher or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I've just got to got to get a shot to listen. I right on. Uh, well, I, self-employment is insanity. <laughs> I'm self-employed. I listen to at least five or six podcasts a day. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, I've, I've talked about this before. I My job allows me to listen to a lot more podcasts than most people can because I'm alone with dogs for a good portion of my day. <laughs> So yeah, I have to I'm deal getting with yelled at retail, so I can. Yeah, I, I wish I had time. Believe me. Exactly. So yeah, me too. I, I, I have that advantage where others don't, but I, I started listening to your show a while back and I, I've really enjoyed the ones recently where you and the uh, Baron von Stormhaven have been doing shows together. Those, yeah, man, I love having fun. him on. Yeah, so yeah, he's a good dude. Yeah, for people who don't know, Baron is uh, one of the other co-hosts of the Lolberts, which technically I think I'm a co-host of still. But <laughs> I haven't done a show in a while, <laughs> but uh, in he, rotation, right? Yes, yes. He's he. Baron's a really interesting dude. He's got he's <laughs> he he's he's probably the only like self-proclaimed, essentially a narco monarchist I know. Um, <laughs> I, that doesn't well, he does call him? See, he does consider himself one something like that, right? I'm yeah, that, I'm probably in the same camp as that guy. <laughs> I don't know because I've I've deduced the theory like if if you have legitimate claim to property, there's essentially no difference between you and a king, none whatsoever. So if you support legitimate property ownership, then you essentially support monarchy. I could see it's just how argument. monarchy is defined or obtained is the question mark true uh div- by divine right of course like oh yeah of course because uh, my mom right fucked over there and popped that's out right. this dude and he had sex with her that's right uh <laughs> god wills it 
God wills it. There's a magic space demon that gave me all. <laughs> <laughs> All Bestowed right. oh. upon me my my fiefdom. <laughs> my fiefdom. <laughs> no, yeah, it's definitely an interesting theory, man, and I was glad to have him on to kind of explain it. So, very cool. So, well, before we get too far away from that, so you're what? I mean, I, I've heard you you have other, you know, you've had other, you have other co-hosts and stuff there, but it doesn't seem like you have anything like, uh, I don't know, people interchange and stuff like that. Like, what actually? Why didn't you uh, tell us if you don't mind? What what got you into starting the podcast and uh, got you to where you are now? Yeah, well, um, initially it was just me and my buddy Drew. He has his own podcast, uh, which is kind of like 90s uh, nostalgic themed. And he had me on once and I loved it. So I was like, hey, man, I'm, and I've, I'd been listening to podcasts for a while. And uh, around this time, I discovered the Freedom Fiends. And then, uh, you know, down that rabbit hole I went. So I'm like, I'm just going to kick mine off. You know, <laughs> found Creamy Radio Audio and, and uh, just ran with it, man. It was fun. And I, I love it. So I've been doing it ever since. Once you once you start doing it, it is kind of addicting. They they the shows go by so fast. You're like, wow, that was an hour. Like <laughs> me, yeah. me and Jeremy and and uh, um, Danilo and a few others. They like I I've been doing podcasts before this, so I had already experienced that phenomena. But uh, they like <laughs> first couple episodes, like we'd be done and be an hour and a half long and be like, wow, that did not feel like an hour and a half. And I'm like, yeah, I told you guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you have so much uh, fun. Yeah. It's just. You know, it, it blows by and I always have this like adrenaline or energy rush when I'm doing it, when I'm done. And then it's like, ah, oh, you know, just get tired right after. Just kind of crash. <laughs> there's no telling what, uh, <laughs> yes, it's there's no mo monumental effort, right? <clears throat> there's no telling what like Rush Limbaugh or somebody like that feels like. That must be why they do it, you know, till they literally die. <laughs> well, he's hopped up on Oxycontin, yeah. so I can imagine why he did. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I forgot about that. My <laughs> Well, I, Plus I sleeping on, you know, piles of money and beautiful women. So yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, makes them a lot more comfortable. I mean, I, I know, I know, yes. for, I know for me, I get that rush. I mean, and it's do, doing this show isn't too bad. Doing some of the other shows I do isn't so bad. When I get the rush after the fiends, it's a royal pain in the ass because it's three o'clock in the morning for me. And I'm like, holy <laughs> fuck, I need to go to sleep. <laughs> and I am like wired beyond belief. <laughs> and it's, I don't even like, you know, Every, all the other hosts take yeah. usually take naps before the show. I don't. Um, like I purposely stay awake so I don't like so I'm not extra awake after the show. I try not to drink coffee <laughs> at night or tea or anything, and I'm still just like flying. So I don't go to bed until yeah. like four a.m. And uh, you know, it's whatever. <laughs> it's yeah, fun. Usually, there's people here for some reason to either eat dinner before or after uh, while I'm doing the podcast on Thursdays. And uh, when I'm done, I, I'm still just like. It takes me a while for just everything to calm down. Like I, I, I know what you guys are talking about. I can't imagine <laughs> two in the morning. <laughs> That'd be uh, yeah. Whew. Well, I'm loopy okay. half the time. You, so. you suffer for your art, Jeremy, and, and we appreciate exactly. it. Exactly. You know, I, I do. What, <laughs> yes, I do what I got. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. He okay. is the martyr for freedom because of that. You know, that's he's he's putting in his. Oh no, no, I I don't want Absolutely. no fucking martyrdom, man. No, no, give me. Don't don't pin that shit on me. I'm, <laughs> I'm making fun valuable of valuable sleep. I'm I'm out there making fun of all the other idiots who are trying to make martyrs of themselves. <laughs> I don't want to be in that camp. <laughs> I was uh, I was being silly. The one, the one thing I was curious about, David, is I, I don't think I've, I don't think I ever heard. Where, where did the name for your podcast? I think it's a great name. Where did you come up with that? Um, well, you I know, was it was just. To, oh, sorry. Oh, wrong, which, Dave. Which one are you? <laughs> yeah. Dave, I said David. I was trying to differentiate. <laughs> yes. I, I was, it was a joke. Uh, sorry. No, it's all good. I, I'm used to that. I have a brother-in-law named David, so it's like you know, it, it always happens. But uh, I was just, I've always kind of like been into zombies and. Um, I just thought it was a really great metaphor for what the state is in a way it, or the people who support it because they kind of, you know, sustain themselves or consume other people to, you know, perpetuate their own existence or they're, you know, they're just kind of mindlessly driven to, to, uh, you know, consume. And, uh, so yeah. it just kind of stuck, I think, you know, it's just a fun kind of, I don't want to say clickbaity, but you know, let people know that it's it's a little you know a little lighthearted and uh, we try to have fun with it you know talk about liberty but in a fun way and and uh, just run with it so yeah brains or roads <laughs> the comparison is apt Morocco's. I mean right after a zombie gets done eating a brains it's like oh where's some more brains you know right after a commie gets more tax money they're like where's more tax money <laughs> yeah exactly yeah no that's that's not inaccurate no I guess not well. All right. Awesome. Well, so this week, I think we were talking about a few things before the show. And 
of course, there's the stuff with Vault 7, I guess, going on, which I guess we could <laughs> talk about. But the other thing we started to get into before the show was uh, guests for the show and, you know, booking guests and stuff like that. And we recently got approached by someone who tried to offer a guest for us um, who apparently is maybe he must be having hard a hard time booking gigs if he's asking if he's got somebody trying to book gigs for him. Wouldn't you think? Dave? <laughs> Either that or division of labor, one of the other. Possible. Uh, yeah, uh, you can't really tell unless you you know. But yeah, it could be one or the other. I guess it could. I don't. Know. It just seemed odd to me. But I'm talking about before I bury the lead any further. I, I am talking about Adam Kokesh. Uh, he he was he was he was recently pitched to us by a third party who who I'm friends with. But it was just it was an interesting thing to be to have you know instead of us reaching out. I mean, we've had people come to us before and ask us to be on the show to promote different things, which I'm, I'm not opposed to at all. I was actually speaking to Ben Stone and a couple other people earlier today and about that whole idea about, because Ben's try Ben is out there trying to promote his new, his new project, the freedom B and B app that I didn't get in that auto audio book. Ugh. I was listening to the audio book that we have on the RSS feed right now. Oh I yes. Ben's, I'm not on it. <laughs> ben, Ben's, Ben's audio book that yeah. we, we, I uh, guess I missed the boat boat on that one. So, well, no, it, don't feel bad. So did I. So it well, no, listen, there's a lot there's a lot of people that I'm sure would have loved to have been part of it. It was because Shane, oh, yeah. Shane Radliff is the one who pretty much did most of yeah. the work behind it. Uh, him and Kyle Reardon did a lot of work on it. And, you know, he pitched it to the fiends first. So yeah. like, he, you know, there's a small group called Fiendtopia that um, our friend Paul Gordon actually created. That is a, you know, he calls it like the unofficial site of the Fiend fans. So, you know, a bunch of Fiend fans are in there and, and most of the Fiends are in there as well. So Shane pitched it on there. And I, th I don't think he was expecting the response he got because right away, like four of us were like, yeah, we'll do it. What do you need? When do you need it? <laughs> yeah, Cause, cause I regret Ben's, not jumping on that, man. That's a great, yeah. that's a great project. Yeah. Well, you know, but, I mean, and as we've, as we've told, you know, as I've told Ben a number of times, his, you know, he's meant so much to me, you know, his words, his writing, listening to his podcast mm -hmm. over the years and stuff that uh, it was just my small way of giving back to him just to do something like that. I wish you would come back on Ben. If you're listening to this or you hear this, uh, actually, this. actually, uh, uh, if that's, uh, I, I don't want to promise anything, but there's a good chance that we will be getting a visit from Ben Stone in a couple of weeks uh, to speak nice. All right. to, to speak about the woo, project woo. I was I started talking about before we got sidetracked by the book, uh, the Freedom B and B <laughs> app that he is putting out uh -huh. there right now. Uh, there's a small team of people working on it. Uh, I've been lucky enough to have been included in part of it. Uh, as uh, as I spoke about on the Anarchy Action meeting that I was on on Tuesday night, I may not be part of it for much longer. I got into a fight with one of the creators, but we'll see. As of right now, I'm still... <laughs> we'll, uh -oh. we'll see. A guy like Jeremy, a guy like you, you have a mimetic uh, uh, slant that you can basically add to any team, and a lot of people aren't thinking about that these days. But, man, if you have somebody that can create good memes... You can get your stuff to go well, viral. It's, it's quick. Not a, well, it wasn't even about that. My jo my job as part of that team was actually to be to poke holes in everybody's ideas. I was supposed to be the Debbie Downer of the group and constantly the try shit to Lord. foil. Yeah, right. th that that's supposed to be my job. And then I got into a, a little bit of an argument with one of the creators because you're, I you're challenged the white hat hacker because I challenged something he said. So, uh, <laughs> but no, but but well, the Jer Jeremy, if it's if it's any consolation, that means you were doing your job fantastic. That's what well. I that's what I think. Well. So that's that's how I'm trying to take it. Um, but anyway, but the project itself, I, 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 regardless of whether I remain on the team or not. The, anyways, back to Adam Kokesh. The project. Well, we're talking about this now because you brought we brought this up. But the project that I want to because I'm going to plug this project. Uh, damn it, the pro the pro the project that that they're working on. I'm going to stand behind regardless because I think it's a great idea. It's essentially an Airbnb app, but it's yeah. designed for it's it's geared towards anarchists and freedom seekers and stuff like that. And, hmm. you know, they're working, they're, they got a team working on the encryption and stuff. And there's, they're working on Ooh. possibly having a, uh, having another, a third party involved to uh, facilitate transactions between different currencies. So everybody That's can, legit. yeah, because nice. we, it definitely wants to, we, the goal is to get, you know, hopefully more cryptocurrencies involved, but it'll pretty mm. much, you know, I think even, I think even credit cards might be involved for a while too, but it's, it's a great idea. And I, I'm very excited to, uh, like I said, to, to be a, to be a little part of it. And I, I want to help Ben promote it. So 
he will most likely make an appearance, if all goes well, in the next couple of weeks to uh, talk about that further, which I think will be pretty cool. Awesome. So. Awesome. Awesome. I, I'm looking forward to Yeah, that's a killer to project. Yeah, it's, you know, and that's... Yeah, it sounds cool. Yeah, and we, you know, that's, that's what I was telling him earlier today, is I, we've had our share of, you know, quote-unquote big names on this show, but... We've also had people that nobody's ever heard of just because they were working on something that we that we thought was kind of cool, and it was like maybe this yeah. should get out there. Maybe more should, people should know about it, or just people. We've had we've had fans of our show come on, just you know, just fans who have not, who aren't yeah. doing anything, who just want to talk about whatever we put in front of them, and it's just you know, I think it's opening doors for people. It's getting more it's getting more exposure for people. It's introducing. That's how I ended up here. Exactly. Not gonna lie. Yeah, it's, it's introducing people to yeah. other ideas, so it's. Good stuff all around, Absolutely. I believe. Absolutely. So, but yeah, we were talking, I guess we were talking about Adam Kokesh. And so he was pitched to us as a guest and both Dave and I, I actually didn't want to do it. I, I mean, I, I want him on at some point, but I want him to, to publicly recruit, you know, p- recuse himself from this presidential nonsense. Nonsense. I, I, as soon as he does that, I'll be back on the yay, yay, Adam Kokesh. But until he does that, I'm done. Like, come on, dude. You're not, no. <laughs> But that's not going to fix it. But he's it's been, not yeah, going to do anything. Yeah, but he's been talking that. It's I, a publicity stunt. Well, that's what I, I know thought. it is, but it's still it's contradictory. Yeah, but he's please been talking. Don't, hashtag, this, please donate. <laughs> he's been talking that he's been talking that smack, you know, for doing that for quite a while now, and you still wanted to have him on last year, <laughs> even after he'd already announced his intentions to do this. Well, it wasn't until he went a little, some of his other stuff. I don't know. I mean, I just had no interest in talking to him and I just, I kind of left it in Dave's court. I said, yeah, I said, okay, I'll, I'll ask Dave. I'll check with him. Cause I don't think he'll have a problem with it. And then I was very shocked when Dave's immediate answer was no, <laughs> which was good because I don't feel like giving him a platform at the present. I mean, we're going to talk about him right now, but I don't really feel like giving him a platform at the moment. <laughs> That, that whole situation yeah, with him I mean, and Macy kind of left a bad taste in my mouth. I mean, I don't know really who I, to believe. There's I, a lot of hearsay back and forth, but it just, the whole thing yeah. just made, kind of made me weirded out. And I was like, ah, all right, I don't really need to deal with you. I, I don't do drama at all. So like anytime someone has like a drama thing that pops up, I just, my eyes glaze over. I don't even pay. I don't even remember it. Cause I, it's always, it's always this. Someone said this and someone said that and it's like, are you kidding me? Well, this, like, no. this, this yeah, wasn't but necessarily. He, but there was a con- he yeah. wants to run for president. I don't want a president, even the one that is going to shut the system down. I want it, it's going to shut this. It's it's going to shut itself down all alone. Not one person needs to go there. Not well, one. He's kind of big. He's kind of big in the question. He's assuming that he could shut it down because that's kind of what Trump has run on. And how's that? How's that working out? You know what I mean? Trump's just trying but to make the system something- better. Not even get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but that's what he ran on. And how, how's that working out with the deep state? You know, you seem that just because you get in there in office that one day you can just sign all these things and it's magic. You know, it's it's equivalent to pushing the button, I think. He wants to get in Adam there and Kokesh just push, push. polls. Adam and Kokesh has sudden heart attack. <laughs> exactly. Oh. Or his, oh, uh, yeah. the fiery or, car no, crash. No, no, no. Right. Gas, yeah, exactly. Gas pedal gets stuck <laughs> and he runs into a wall. Suddenly, so all of a sudden, so strange. Live I video know, from Adam Kokesh's Samsung TV ruins political career. You know, right, whatever. Exactly. <laughs> it does, it, it's it, it's pointless to try to interact with this political system. The only thing you can do is change culture. And if I could talk to Adam Kokesh and he wants to come on this show and talk about changing culture, I'm down. And he wants to talk about ending this silly idea of being the president, I'm down. But I don't want him to come on and talk about that or, or whatnot. Or the Libertarian Party, or anything like that. Just don't. Well, okay, Dave. I still may not, I still may not want to talk to him after, if he drops that. But you know, whatever. Yeah, uh, that whole contract thing. You know, say what you want about drama, and I get that. But that whole contract thing was just really kind of well. Yeah, and, that's uh, what I'm talking about. I don't I, know if he ever came out and explicitly denied it. You know, he never came out and said it wasn't. He didn't do it, or you know. He's well, I don't think he really could. She showed the contract. I, saw, so. I thought he exactly. Posted, I thought so. I thought actually he posted it to start with. I, I, I don't remember how it actually went control. down, but yeah, whatever a, it was. A contract, even in a, even a relationship. I'm gonna get crucified here. A contract, even a relationship <laughs> contract, is in line with libertarian ideals. I'm not opposed to the idea True, of contracts. It's and the I nature of it. I get it. I, I understand, but it's still like, who cares? The, it's still between those two people. I, I don't. The devil's in the details on that one, you know. Yeah. I, don't know. I actually have there's no idea. A, about there's always an empty so. parking lot. 
There's always an empty parking lot to be had. So. <laughs> What a, I don't know. He, what dude, this guy, he lives masturbation. Like, he, he, yeah, that was amazing. Best. Uh, you, you're, uh, yeah, that series of memes but, is, uh, <laughs> is uh, Olymp, Olympic level, man. Uh, so, yes. But he, yes. he lives a few hours away from me. He lives in the same state as I do. And um, I, I just, ugh. <laughs> God damn it. Arizona. I've, I've met him once. I have no problems people. with him. Uh, I didn't get a weird vibe from him or anything. I, I yeah, I just I hung out with him a couple of times. He, wished he would be more logically consistent. That's it. <laughs> I did get kind of the a state weird is the enemy. It, Elect me. It doesn't right. It's, it's, come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. Well, yeah. Know. Everybody's got to have a plan, so, right? Everybody's got to. You're a, a zombies stick. fan. What What's your favorite zombies movie? And then I'll tell you mine. It's kind of like um, uh, you show me yours, I'll show you mine. Yeah. Ooh, all right. I like where this Don't is going. Don't get me with a good. Uh, time. <laughs> Getting real weird on Seeds of Liberty. <laughs> I may just step uh, out my for favorite a minute. if you guys want to have a like you know a little menage a trois or something about this. I don't know. <laughs> well, menage. I think we're all sci-fi fans here. If you like zombies, uh, and Andre's a sci-fi writer, and I'm a nerd, I, I, li uh, I like Jeremy's it all, man. Old, so I mean, it's all yeah. <laughs> I'm Jeremy's old, so, older. By, so by definition, that means I have to like it. I guess I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm probably older than Jeremy. I think I'm older than Jeremy. How old are you, Jeremy? I just turned forty a couple of weeks ago. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I'm almost 39, so we're we're in the same. Yeah. You know? Well, happy birthday! I never said that on the show. I don't believe, but happy it's birthday, Jeremy. I, well, it's oh, thanks, Dave, but that's because I don't celebrate happy my birthday, birthday. So I don't, I don't celebrate my birthday. So I didn't tell anybody about it. See, I've had I've had deep debates with this. Uh, should it should it be existence day, and that's when you were conceived, or should it be birthday? Are you really already nine months old if you're born, you know, at term or whatever, or? Mm -hmm. Are you as old as you are as soon as you leave the womb? See, it's, it feels too arbitrary to me. I think it's got to go right when you're like essentially the DNA is different, right? Well, well yeah, but how it's do you, kind of in the name birth that you know birthday that new when you DNA were born. though in the womb that that new DNA is you that is existing, so it should be existence day. IMO. We can, yes, but then we you can make a new one like conception day. You know, happy birthday, happy conception day, and then you get a uh, you know more presents every year. I'm down for that. Yeah, and how and and how many how many uh, kids are never going to know when their when their conception day is because they were conceived during some drunken uh, romp at a party or something, and nobody remembers when it actually are there happened. A test tube, test tube. And, you know, put in a test tube at fourteen o'clock on. Yeah, just, you'll, just do the rough math. Yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. They'll give you like a week. And, they'll give you like a two. Sorry. They'll give you like a two week span and go. Okay, just pick something in this range. It's probably right around here. <laughs> Which day works best for you? Um, anyway, to answer what your was, question, your favorite favorite, <laughs> my favorite recent zombie movie is Shaun of the Dead. Um, yes. Fun, oh, okay. yes. Phenomenal. An excellent movie. Yeah, it's a great I mean, movie. It, yeah, it's, it's got all those funny little <laughs> scenarios. It's a happen. it's a legit comedy and it's a and it's a it's a definitely a legit uh, zombie flume. So and then I, I go for the classic dude, uh, Night of the Living Dead or uh, Dawn mm -hmm. of the Dead or Romero. So. There, that's the thing I with zombies, the man. There's so many horrible movies, but <laughs> the ones that are good really stand out. I think the best made one is the second 28 days later. The, uh, 28, 28, uh, 28 weeks. 20, 28 weeks later, yeah. That, that one, I think, is the best made zombie film I've ever seen. Like, it's just so, like, everything goes to shit. It, I, it's not a good zombie movie, in my opinion, unless everyone dies at the end or, like, they're flying off on a plane or, or going off on a boat right. and someone's like hiding a bite mark you know it's like oh <laughs> it never ends yeah. no yeah I I, I I really like 28 days later and I haven't gotten around to watching 28 weeks later so uh, oh, I've, I've watch seen it, it as far as uh, I mean as far like, like Dave said it's not it's not the I'm, I, well I never thought it was the best zombie movie and I really didn't think it was all that great but it mm. does really it, it really drives home like okay everything is moderately okay and we're doing all right and just like literally everything breaks down and goes to shit and it's horrible and it's just <laughs> utter garbage and then nice. the, the, everything they have to, to make shit. it 28 years later they have oh to, jesus right? christ dave no stop i'm cutting <laughs> you off months? here 28 months it's just like months? one dude one dude living alone in a cave you know it's like basically he's an, he's uh, an ant prim it's it would be well, it would right. be like the yeah, we'll ideal exactly I like the George Romero style zombies. Okay, the slow, like, uh, you know, but like the fast zombies to me are just horrifying. <laughs> They're just absolutely horrifying. I, I don't True. know why. 
Well, like even the walking dead, like the zombies are kind of slow, but like the, once you watch 28 weeks later or 28 days later, those guys are like Usain Bolt. Like it, like you lose. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's because no, they're, they're infected with just, rage. The rage yeah. zombies are, are, yeah, that's a whole nother level of, uh, cardio you don't that want you to need. be getting tracked am, by usain bolt zombies i am so out of the loop on all of this stuff I've, i mean i've did the romero well, that, ones you like don't the, run a zombies government in uh you podcast just, do you now i don't that's why i'm not a zombie that's like, why i'm here yeah exactly i'm not i'm not as i'm not i'm not like opposed to zombie films i've just never really watched many of them i mean i watched the like you know the ones you mentioned the romero you, you know the, really the early people ones people to watch the original films, ones IMO. <laughs> Zombie Land is like the only one I've watched in any in like in the, yeah, the, pro probably that's the a past great one too. probably the past twenty yeah, years. And yeah, I love that one. Too. But that's just because I'm you know, Woody I've been Woody like shoots huge... Bill Murray is so <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Oh my god, you shot Bill Murray. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, that was oh god, that was terrible. Yeah, yeah, that was so was, perfect. Like even I, I was like, "What?" That, like I, you know, you're just like, "No." That was the Bill closest. Murray's that was dead. the closest I came to crying in a film, and I can't remember how long. <laughs> I was yeah, like, "No, Bill, Bill no, deserved better, man. Bill. He deserved better than that." I will say I this. Love, I, well, go ahead, go ahead, David. I say I love the big gilded gates with the the BM or whatever on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just pulling up. <laughs> It's just ridiculous, like so over the top, and that is exactly what Bill Murray would have. Like that's that would be Bill Murray's house. I'm pretty sure he's it earned it. He's fucking. Oh, if you yeah. want to watch, if you want to watch a, the quintessential zombie film, in my opinion, the best, the one. If I was like somebody was like, hey, what's a good zombie film? It'd be there's a Ving Rhames one. I believe it's called. Uh, they're all holed up in a in a. Uh, a yeah, mall. yeah. No, it's it was supposed um, to be that, like the that remake was the, of that was the remake. That it, was the Zack that that was the Zack Snyder remake. Of no, I don't George live R. In, Romero, or George Romero's uh, Dawn of the Dead. Yes, yeah. Dawn, Dawn of, of the, the Dead, Dead remake. Was. Yeah. That one is great too. Everyone I, I, plays. It's great. Yeah, I, I I like that one. I enjoyed it, even though it was technically not a zombie movie because they're you know they didn't reanimate. But that's a whole nother level of of geekiness. I don't know if you guys want to get into, but well, it was still one, a great film. I loved it. Well, one film I did want to it's mention, and it's and it's not so much the film because the film was it was okay. I, I mean, I liked I liked the aesthetics and I liked the the way that it was produced, but I liked the book a lot more. Was World War Z. Yeah, if you haven't read the book World oh. War Z, I strongly suggest you do it if you're interested in the zombie genre because the, I the have book yet is to, phenomenal. Yeah, I, like I've yet to find Did another zombie that story that's as gripping. The yeah, lead the actor movie, of I'm Walking sorry, Dead died, didn't he? What? What? Yeah, yeah, what? I'm pretty sure I read that somewhere. The lead actor, like the guy that plays uh, what, Rick. Angela. Rick died. Yeah, in a car crash. My what? my Facebook was not littered with this, so um, I'm pretty sure that can't be yeah, true. Did, was I, was I, did I get hoaxed on that one? Was that fake news? I I don't know. <laughs> I, I think I, that's I, fake news. I've never even seen the show, so I don't know. But I'm pretty like I know a lot of people on my feed watch it, so I'm pretty sure I would have seen something if that. Is. Yeah, it's uh, S Snopes isn't always reliable, but they busted it. I think. Oh, there you go. Death, yeah, it's a hoax. But They're uh, actually pretty well. Th I don't think they've ever been wrong on a death hoax that they've called a hoax. As far as as far as I can remember, they, they so those are owned yeah. by George Soros in part. I did find that out. Isn't everybody that little couple with their the, their dog or is <laughs> it a cat? Fiend phone isn't. I, I can prove it. Not yet. Actually, I did see it, if he offered enough money. It that be. Time Warner owns Infowars, uh, and Time Warner is obviously owned by the Bilderberger Group. The Bilderbergers. Are, are, are you trying to are you trying to bring back the uh, controlled opposition? We're gonna build a better burger. Are you trying to bring back the control? Well, no, like that's, uh, that's, argument? A that's a legit yeah, conspiracy the, that floats around. Like, the that, that Bilderberg yeah. is owned by, like, that they're legit owned by uh, uh, Time Warner. They're started by uh, 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 Ted Turner a while back, control like, whenever he started. Yeah, it was controlled opposition. Yeah, controlled opposition. Uh, yeah, it's possible. Well, how long has InfoWars been up and running now? Uh, yeah, how quite long a while. Is it? Well, I know, but I know, I, I know, at least a, a decade. Or, I know Alex yeah, also, more than that. Alex started like what, 98, 99, 97, maybe. I was going to say like at least before I was in high school, because I'd heard of InfoWars in like, you know, freshman, He's sophomore year. He's been doing it year. for 22, 23 years. Something like well, that. yeah, but not, not InfoWars. He's been doing, he's been or, doing yeah, something. Yeah, well, Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah. he was doing. That's what I'm saying, because he was, he was yeah. around. Prison Planet or whatever. He was around when uh, William Cooper was still alive, because Cooper hated him. <laughs> Cooper didn't I, see, have I don't very, know what very to think about Alex Jones. Very I, I, I just nice like things to, to say uh, about Alex Jones. 
and Infowars and stuff. I don't know who what happens with all this stuff. I just hear it and I, I don't I I think God that would be one hell of an acting job, man. That would that would be give the man a Grammy is all I'm saying. Like that's the that would be the best acting job ever to keep a character for that long relentlessly. Mm, you know, it's, not necessarily. Uh, it it at least in my at least from what my understanding of stuff like that, it actually becomes easier the longer you do it because you end up just becoming that person. Yeah, you know it's it just, yeah, just, like just Elvis wasn't always Elvis. I, I get you. Yeah, you just yeah. Be, you become you be, you spend so much time in that character that you kind of become that character. I mean, you see the okay. same thing happen with actors and and actresses who become so immersed in a role. I mean, there's the stories about people like you know Heath Ledger, it's like a just, second skin. Yeah, he, he became so immersed in it that he just couldn't. You know, it, 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 it that's fucks not with a head. people. Man, reference it really either. sucks that Heath Ledger's died. <laughs> yes, I get it so upset does. about that every time. One of my favorite best actors. Joker ever. Yes, it was the best Joker ever. Like, like. Mark Hamill's good, but like he can't be live action. Oh, his like, voice I mean, is oh, incredible. Yeah, dude. I, I, I do a good sick. Joker too. I just I don't want to I don't want to try it out on. <laughs> oh, maybe because no the, balls. You won't do it. Oh, uh, let's let's see. What would the Joker say? I can't do his laugh well, but I can do Mark Hamill doing the Joker. <laughs> That just sounds like a creepy it's, Alex Jones. The Joker's pretty good. <laughs> I'm the Joker. Uh, uh, I'm Alex Jones doing the Joker. That's better. There you <laughs> Alex, go. Alex Joker. Alex Joker. I dig it. I'm I'm <laughs> Alex Joker. See, there you go. When you and when you start when Screw you, you Batman. When you start <laughs> Why so serious? When when tinfoilwars.com officially gets up and running, then you can have multiple Alexes. You can have Al, you can have Axel Jonas, you can have Alex Joker, you can have you can have the many faces of your Alex. It'll be great. Oh. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, ex- I, I'm I heard about that on your last show. I'm excited for that. Yeah, I like I can't we're, wait to start writing for that site. I like I cannot wait. I'm going to have so much fun We're going to we're going to we're going to mess with it. I need a Somebody that knows how to do uh, websites well to contact me if you want to do this because we're gonna try to make money on this one. <laughs> hey, I if Steve Miller Miller can do help. Truth or Elvis, um, why not Alex Jones as a Joker? At, you know, I yes. don't see a problem with it. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna do like uh, like uh, fake uh, like par- like um, there's a website called Kayfabe News. If you know what uh, Kayfabe means, it's basically like uh, keep it in character uh, for wrestling, and so. Uh, it's just a fake news site. They like it'll be like Undertaker scene trying out uh, coffins at a local morgue or something. And it's just like, I mean, that's a really bad example of them. But that's that's what we're gonna be trying to do with the site. Just uh, make silly headlines and stuff so that people can share. It'll be a total fake news situation. But it's gonna be called tinfoilwars.com. It's gonna, yeah, it's gonna be hilarious. I can't believe it hasn't been taken. Like I, we were all like, what? <laughs> nice. This is so obvious. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute! Did I just hear you make a call out for for a, a web designer? Don't you think we should take care of our page that you've been promising yeah, our fans shit. for like I have a year no now? Idea what to do with our page? <laughs> Priorities <laughs> before man. before you start <laughs> taking on the trying to take on the world with tinfoil wars. I mean, you know. Oh, Dave, I you're so nothing. useless. I am useless. I mean, come on, man! I, I was, need like three. I need like three of me. <laughs> One, one doing one thing. One. I'm in talks with a new hosting company, and they went to go look at our page. And the first thing they came back, they tried to say, they tried to find something nice to say, and I was just like, "No, it's okay. Our site's a piece of shit." And their response was, "Oh, thank you. I, I didn't want to have to be the one to tell you." I'm like, "No, no. I'm quite aware that our site is a piece of shit." <laughs> Better you than me. So, you know, we should probably do something about that before you go enlisting that. So Although I do want to see, I do want to see Tinfoil Wars. I really, I'm telling you, man, I really want to see Bodie play a version of Paul Joseph Watson. That would be fucking, the two of you going back and forth would be fucking hysterical. Like I may actually, I might might, might actually pay to watch that. (laughs) It might, it might be funny. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I got a friend like here, like that lives close by that does a really, really good English accent. And he's been watching Paul, Paul Joseph Gordon, uh, or Paul Joseph Gordon Watson. (laughs) <laughs> I always Jesus. Just, how many names do you have? That might, that might names. be his name. That might be the Paul uh, Joseph the Gordon other, Watson. Yeah, the third. Let's go. Yeah. No, Paul if you're gonna do that, you gotta give him like. If you do that, you gotta give him like six or seven. And a title. Yes. And a title. Sir. Paul Joseph. Paul Joseph Gordon Levitt Watson. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's it. That's it right there. 
Uh, hitting all the bases yeah. right now. <laughs> so, Dave, you you uh, were a big status back in the day, and you were just like, screw all that? Yeah, I was, you know, I think like most of us, were, I'm, a, I'm a reformed statist. So I, I, I've always kind of been like leaning towards individual liberty or whatever. Because I, I, growing up, I was like a, I was into skateboarding and punk and metal. And I was like, you know, whatever. Didn't really give a shit. I How guess not, more nihilistic than anything. Ah, great. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> ankles, knees. Yeah. My, my, my parents always said like, you're going to regret doing all this shit. And I'm like, whatever. And I'm like, you're fuck you, Bob. yeah, watch this. Now it hurts. And, um, you know, I went through the whole, <laughs> you know, when you're in your early twenties, you kind of flirt with, I think collectivism, that old expression. If you're not a communist at 25, you have no heart. If you're still a communist at 50, you have no brain. Um, but yeah, then I kind of got back me since like age five. Well, that's good, man. It's good. For, you know, it was, it, it, and part of that was more like, uh, my dad was kind of authoritarian. So it was more like uh-huh. a F you to him, you know, he was really into like, you know, Rush Limbaugh and all that shit. So, hmm. um, yeah, mine too. But then, you know, once I, I, I grew, you know, I grew up a little bit, I got, I, I had a family, I bought a house and I'm like, holy shit, dude, <laughs> you know, you start paying, start paying taxes, you start paying your mortgage, yep. you start paying property tax and it all kind of, yeah, you know, it becomes, becomes it becomes real. This. Right. You know, I, I was a minarchist and then I kind of got into like minarchist or, you know, minimal statism for a while. And I realized that the whole government is a necessary evil thing doesn't really fly. And, uh, Right around that time, I got exposed to Bill Bupert and uh, the Freedom Fiends, and uh, you know some other shows like that. Bad Quaker, so and uh, here I am, man. So the seeds of the, <coughs> the seeds of liberty, and the seeds, and of course the seeds of liberty podcast. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> it, yeah, you know, there's so many things. great, um, there's so many great podcasts and shows that yeah. um, you know yeah, expose you to Fiends it. Or, is good. They have a lot of different voices on there, so you get to hear a wide spectrum of, you know, people's opinions. Absolutely. And, you know, uh, Bill Bupert is still has an open invitation to basically just put out whatever propaganda he wants through this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> through yeah. This oh, outlet. Speaking, speaking of Mr. Bupert, I, I may actually have the opportunity to work with him in the near future on something. Um, nice. I'll, I'll keep everybody we'll posted. Rub it in everyone's face. Hey, well, listen, yeah, man. Ooh. <laughs> I don't. I, I. I don't get to toot my own horn enough. <laughs> not, not, I'm not. Well, not doing enough things, you know. So. Well, whatever. you're lucky you ran into Bill Bupert and a few of a few of those other guys that you mentioned uh, early on, because uh, there's some crazy people out there. <laughs> oh yeah. But uh, no, Bill like what? Bupert what? Is, whew, what shows it. like the what shows like the Freedom Fiends and the Little Birds and you guys taught me was that you can talk about liberty and have a you know it doesn't have to be all kind of dry and stale um, theory or or you know there, there's a place for that but you know that's kind of what I took from it and ran uh, hopefully I ran with it and make it you know make it fun make it interesting and I think what the most important thing is to uh, kind of infiltrate popular culture or media you know that's kind of what mm-hmm. I, I look at. Um, as being kind of where I kind of focus at is, you know, what can you do? Because that's where a lot of these statist ideals or, you know, make inroads is through uh, movies, media, television shows, yep. all that. Yep. So, yeah. you know, it's trying to fill that void, I guess. Well, their, their systems are collapsing, obviously. If you're watching anything or reading anything uh, other than the mainstream or television, you know, if you're, unless you're watching ABC or Fox or whatnot. But if you're if you're if you're reading behind the curtain, essentially, all their stuff is collapsing. No one's watching it. It's being propped up by all this insane mm-hmm. <laughs> backroom deal money, essentially, and government bailouts. There, the culture is moving towards the internet, towards more independent creators. I mean, look at PewDiePie. He's got fifty three million people that watch him, and he doesn't have. It's just him. He doesn't have like four hundred thousand people working for himself or his you know his organization to prop up his propaganda outlet it's him so mm. the I world's see. changing and um it's uh it's pretty crazy out there and, and the more i say the more the merrier so your show uh zombies uh <laughs> government you zombies government, zombies, you. Zombies yeah. government. It, it, i always want to say sadist in you <laughs> uh, no when i when i first started it i was going to make it zombies the state in you and i the guy that okay, uh right. i kind of was talking about starting it with he's like no let's make it government and we kind of went with that and it kind of works, but yeah, I, I kind of was leaning towards like zombies, the state in you. So 
You're not. I, I like where your head's at. You were. You're going in the right direction. I. It's like I. I stuck. I like Jeremy's told me the show. I added it to my podcast. Or like it's stuck in my head a few times when I say it. I like the go- zombies. The sta- I like, zombies governing you. But yeah, but to to the point you were making before about trying to you know you gotta you know try to reach out yeah. and use the different culture the and stuff like that. Well, no, but the the term government will make sense to a lot more people than the state yeah. will right. because yeah, most people yeah. most people hear the the state and get confused and they think you're talking they about think, a specific oh, like Texas exactly. or New York or yeah. <laughs> so if you if you're yeah, trying exactly. to reach if you're trying to reach a broader audience and you know from the stuff that I've listened to from, from you guys I mean that's what you do because you don't talk about necessarily government things you just you talk about other you know you talk about anything else but it, in those type of situations when you have a when you have a group of people that have have a similar mindset like that it just naturally comes out you know mm-hmm. like we'll do we'll do news topics here sometimes and we do specific we, we do, we've done specific uh, show topics in the past and we also started by i think originally we kind of tried to start by laying like groundwork and doing like the basic theories and stuff like that and and then thankfully we quickly got away from that because that got really boring really quickly for me too. <laughs> but you know, yeah, you can only harp on the nap so much, you know. Yeah, exactly. But if you sit and have just have a conversation about zombie movies, for example, or music or whatever it is, if you're sitting there, if it's if you're a couple of anarchists or a couple of you know libertarians, whatever you want to call yourself, you know, it's going to naturally come out in the conversation. It just ends up coming up because that's just the way your mind works for, you know, for most of us, that's just what happens. Right. You, it naturally comes out. I mean, I do it all the time. I have to catch yeah. myself when I'm talking to clients sometimes because yeah. we'll start no, talking same, about something and I'm like, well, oh, wait a minute. We haven't discussed this yet. Let's not go down that road. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. No, same thing with me and customers in the store. I mean, I can't tell you how many times the conversation is veered into, you know, and cap land about, you know, oh yeah, this is, totally the fault of the government and if it wasn't for government we wouldn't be having these problems and you know i i, I have to catch myself too because there was one time i almost got into it with a customer so i was like I, i'm probably just gonna have to back <laughs> off of this because i want to keep my job i have a sweet gravy job and i'm have no interest in losing it right now well, Do one of the, well uh, smart man yeah yeah i i, I know what you guys i know how you guys feel <laughs> Well, see, I, 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 I find it, I, I do that when I'm in other people's places, like not, 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 not in my work. Like when if, I go to stores and stuff. If you're around a Christian for any amount of time, they're going to want to try to sit there and tell you about Jesus and the Bible and everything. And yeah, eventually, uh, if they got nothing else to talk about, it's just uh, voluntarism, libertarianism, whatever, uh, freedom can become a religion very quickly. Uh, a good religion, in my opinion, but it can become a religion. And you, yeah, you're right. It, it, it's hard talk, to not talk about it all the time. Didn't we just talk about that last week, about, about creating a religion of freedom? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes, we did. The, <laughs> Have the you church heard about of the freedom? Secession. Yes, but we're gonna, that's right. We're going to use yeah. my church. <laughs> not kind of. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean. Have you heard about your Lord and Savior, freedom? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, freedom for all. It's where you don't steal from me and you carry on with your own life and uh, handle your own shit. Next <laughs> I would offer to go door <laughs> knock, to door knock, and knock. knock on doors to spread the, the message of freedom, but that'll be trespassing and I, I can't do that. Yeah, I was thinking about you doing yard signs or something, like little small ones, kind of like know. the ones they use for like, not like giant ones, like for, for, you know, for an election or something, but like the small ones, like they use for the, uh, the landscapers when they put the chemicals on the lawn and they leave like those, I don't know if you guys have those where you live, where they put those, in, yeah. you know, the, the little, little orange flags. Yeah. Well, they, they mm-hmm. put, ours usually have little yellow, like place, uh, placards, you know, little cardboard placards with actually stuff written on it that says, you know, oh, don't, you know, somebody's been, you know, don't step here for 24 hours, tiny little sign, you know, like a three by five index card sign. I'll just go around and stick those on people's. That, that that's how I'll proselytize. I won't even have to. St- I won't even have to step on your yard. I'll just stick it right here. <laughs> Come yeah, out and read it at your leisure. Are you trespassing on someone's property by sticking something that they didn't ask for on their property? You're violating the tenets of our faith, Jeremy. Um. Yeah. Get off of my lawn. I'm okay with Jer- rules. Jeremy. You're making me extremely uncomfortable. Like you. Yeah. Ke- you can't do this to my faith. This is all I have. I, I have tra- Well, listen, as as the head of the Church of the Immaculate Secession, I really don't give a rat's ass. I think we can bend the rules. <laughs> and I think if you don't want to bend the rules, you don't have to, but I'm going to. We're going to have I, to do this I, like jackalope fest, I mean, I could buddy. just You're throw them. Like, I, I, just- I love that. I love that title, by the way. That's amazing. What? Immaculate, immaculate secession. Yeah, that just came to me. <laughs> that just came to me a couple of years ago. I don't even remember how. I was just... Oh, it, actually, it was right after... 
Dave had, I think it was Dave, you, Dave, you introduced me to Adrian Parks. And, uh, mm-hmm. I think right after that, and I got talking to, to Adrian and he had this whole idea about create, cause he was an ordained minister and he had a couple of friends that were ordained ministers and they had this, you know, he had this idea of starting up the voluntarist ministry and, you know, he invited me to be part of it. And I'm like, Oh, I'm, you know, I, I don't really do religion at all, but this is kind of interesting. And then just one day it just popped into my head. Like I could come up with a church. What would the name be? And it just came to me like, that's beautiful. I need to use that somehow. So like I created the page, the Facebook page. I didn't do it much with it for a while. It's still, I, I still don't do much with it, but I thought the idea was great. It's just, a, just it's a uh, wonderful idea, a wonderful title. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah. You could uh, just, uh, you know how like a certain sex of Christianity, like we'll pick one, like one chapter out of the Bible and be like, this is it. And they, they go off on that one. I'd be hard just, pressed uh, to pr- pick one that I one that I like entirely. You have to, to pick the one that, that. Uh, acquaints to the most freedom. Couldn't I just write it's my like, own? Well, we don't obey uh, this. Then I'm not getting to heaven. Well, I'm creating my own church. Doesn't that mean I get to create my own Bible essentially if I want to? <laughs> like, hey, yeah, write yeah, write, you write your might. own doctrine, man. Yeah, yeah you, right you might have to. Yeah. Well, we have our we our our, our well, at least a couple of us in anatomy our, of the state done. It, it works for uh, Scientology. Exactly. <laughs> Anatomy of the state is the the. the I mean, if 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 a, if a so so sci fi writer can get can create a religion on a bet, and get it to stick for forty or years or however long it's been around have at this point, that will kill you for talking. <laughs> then shit. why the yeah, heck can't I? Right. Like that's basically, high, I mean, that's basically just, the story, just right? Aside, I am I am a writer, well, so well exactly. I could you, enlist your help, right? You'd you'd be willing to help with this, right? Oh, totally. See, exactly. Totally. We got this covered. Cult, cult building 101 workshop with Seeds of Liberty. Yes. Tune in to the next episode. Oh, sorry. 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 <laughs> yes. Yes. Are we, are, we, are, we, are, we are the cult that wants, that wants, to, that wants you to leave, to leave you the fuck alone. We want to brainwash you into leaving us and everyone else alone. Yes. Mm-hmm. That is, that is the, the modus operandi of our cult. That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I... I I still think we should run the opposite of a zombie. <laughs> exactly. That's the anti zombie, anti cult. We want to unzombify you. I'll unzombify you. Now we're got the cure. We're creating religions. We're creating words. This is great. I love this. <laughs> That's what happens on the seas of liberty. That's why I love being here. This is like the greatest show. Yes. <clears throat> I, I love that name too, dude. Seeds of Liberty, probably the best. I mean, I'm not just saying that because I'm on here, but dude, that's a that's a fucking great show title, man. Seeds of Liberty, the whole you know, planting the seeds. That was Dave. That was Kudos. old Dave. I, I yeah, Dave, we were Dave. we 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 had the we had the the people, and then we had the idea, and then we had what we wanted to talk about. And I said, let's think about a name for a while. And then I just it just came to me, and I just typed it in chat. I was like, Seeds of Liberty, and uh, it was like, and I was like, let me explain. And it was like, this is going to grab conservatives' eyes. And if even if they grab and listen one episode, they've mm-hmm. heard our memes. Once you hear this stuff, yeah. it's hard. It's hard to yeah, fight. Yeah, it, it really is. It really is. Yeah, and we get and and to this day, we still get a ton of conservatives that end up on our Facebook page in our face in our Facebook group uh, that I've gotten messages from that have listened to us. Sometimes they yell at me. Other times they ask questions, which is great. But there's still there's still they don't a ton understand of them out they're there. dealing with someone that's far more conservative than they, than they are. <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah, right. that's like the way problem. way worse. <laughs> yeah, and, and they I, think that they're on the farthest right that the scale can go, basically, as far as you know, individualism and you know, rejecting collectivism. And it's like, oh wait, but you want a government and you want. Uh, a military, and oh, God forbid, we turn off your grandpa's Medicaid and Med. You know, it's like you're not a conservative, bud. You're a communist. Well, yeah, because they're they're still stuck. They're still stuck in the left right uh, political paradigm, which yeah. is like the two dimensional, the like the t- the first two dimensions of the three dimensions of economic spectrum, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's their, they yeah. prefer their brand of socialism. You know, it's it's socialism for the programs that or the enforce. You know, what I want to enforce rather than uh, you know what the other people want. Mm-hmm. But it's still a brand of socialism. Oh yeah, completely. of course it is. <laughs> oh, but don't tell them that they get so offended no, when you no, say that. No, no, don't do that. I, I I had a great example of some cognitive dissonance the other day. I was driving down the road, and I saw I got behind a truck had a three uh, percenter sticker. 
It, I think it may have even been in the in the Arizona, you know, like a three percenter in in the center of an Arizona uh, shape there, sticker. Mm-hmm. And right next to it, he had a Punisher skull with the uh, thin blue line oh, flag oh, man. Yeah, running down it. Shit. And I was like, <laughs> "Wow, man, that is <laughs> that's some serious cognitive dissonance." Back to right blue. There. We'll see. And there you go. When I, the, when I first put out that one meme that's now been redone a bunch of times with the guy with the flag who's flying I both still flags. See that meme? My so, original, yes, the original yeah, one I made. Yeah, I still Your see that one. Original one. one yes. I still see that one. Yeah, I I actually speaking of conservatives and thinking that they that they have it all figured out. I actually got into it, uh, started as a discussion, and then quickly turned into like name calling by them uh, because they didn't know what else to do Uh, the other day in in some thread. But the guy, as a form of argument, tried to throw that meme at me. And I was just like, you really just threw my own meme at me? And he's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, look at that logo. That's my logo. I made that meme over two years ago. That's awesome. Dude, I saw it on 4chan. (laughs) Like recently. Yeah, but but the, that, that was my point. When I first put that out, a bunch of people said it was Photoshop. Nobody does. Nobody's that stupid. Nobody does that. I'm like, no, these people exist. There are these crazy people. No, Jamie's yeah. just not proving that. Good that. At Photoshop, folks. He's not that good. I, I'm That's horrible at Photoshop. Legit, yeah. I've, I've Especially told, not two years ago. I've told people that before. Don't expect you know. Don't expect clean memes like that from me. I don't do stuff like that. That's not <laughs> well, my style. It doesn't style. matter. It, I've already learned that it doesn't even like you could make the meme in fucking paint. Like no one cares as long as it kills. It has to crush though. It has to be the funniest meme. As long as it's, it's funny. Be tank. It, no, yeah, it's right. Be- oh, come on, man. How many times have we talked about this? Most of our huge biggest successes have been our throwaway ones. I know. Some of our so biggest annoying. memes have been ones that I just made when I was in a flurry of making memes and I made like 20 at a time. And then like I was just trying to make a couple extra. So I had a couple like in a backup folder. And one of those will just take off. And it's like, really? I didn't even, like, I literally made that, I, I like, as I was, I like, turning a corner in my car. Like, it wasn't even, like, any thought in it whatsoever. Yeah, I was well, just like, oh, here, 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 boom, But done. here's the funny thing about creating things, though. And you will run into this, because I've run into this as a writer. I've, like, had throwaway ideas, and then I've, like, actually taken a second to try and flesh them out. And they turn into, like, fucking awesome stories. Those are the best ones. Your throwaway mm-hmm. ones. Now, not all mm-hmm. of them. Like, some of them are just legitimate junk. But well, nine could, times out of ten, the ones you throw away are going to be the best ones. Like your your junk or whatever, your backups that sit in like the spare folder, those are the ones that kill. Yeah, it's. I'll tell you the best ones that that they crush is when I don't have the vision for it and I just send it out to like Jeremy and I'm like, hey, here's the parameters, and then Jeremy's like, got it, because it's one thing to like be told what a meme is. And then it has like the first thing that comes in your mind when you hear it explained is completely different than seeing the meme and then trying to make a new meme after that. You already have that first, right. like, you know, you're been imprinted, so to say. You already have a bias. So to speak. So to yeah. speak. Yeah. I, I like having these things like, like, the, we, we came up with the one uh, where it was like Rambo with an ANCAP face, like shooting a machine gun at a. That one no did man, not go. That one like, did uh, not go over. Well, yeah, yeah, that one felt. That, yeah. I thought it was. I it, I thought it ended up being funny, but that one just fell flat. Nobody really liked that one. And it said, uh, "Well, I liked they drew it. First I, blood. I shared it. I shared. I know. It. I know. But it, but it was like it was like you know ten likes. I think on the page. It was. It was well, pretty, you know, it's, for uh, our for uh, our stuff first, lately. It was pretty bad. So, well, you know, first like first week anarchist are like, uh, when can you shoot the mailman? <laughs> it's like, I know, buddy. It's okay. not gonna, it's not gonna work, bud. Stop. All right. T- to yeah. be fair, to be fair, I think you put that out when like based stick man was like all over Facebook too. So I think you had like a lot of really stiff competition. Meme I think the, I think that one's got to hit a rerun. I'm being serious, or maybe a Photoshop and a we, rerun. Yeah, we could try it again, but whatever. But I mean, but again, Did, I I make half the. Sometimes I make one just to make myself laugh, and I've talked about this before. I mean, like the one, yeah. one I put out one this morning that again did, went nowhere, but I thought it was funny as hell because I said it in a thread when I caught when I referred to Trump as Reagan as Reagan two point like Homer Simpson. Oh, yeah, I saw that one. I like that one. <laughs> and it was just like, That's it, what happens. it makes me, it That's made me I'm crack. Saying. It still, it still makes me crack up. I don't care. And I put it out and nobody liked it. I'm like, I don't give a shit. It's my page. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> That's yeah. If, if you don't have fun with it, then you're not going to do the memes. Exactly. That may, like, like that's the ones, that's the problem is, is I only do the memes that make me laugh. Not because I have a hard time con- conceiving what, well, I know what will make Fiend other phone. people laugh. Fiend phone. But I have a hard time like doing it because 
I don't like I can't think like a normal person that would like haha this meme is funny like yeah I get it it's funny but it's just not my humor so like I would never make it uh -oh. like Jerry Jeremy will make like an obvious meme that I would like say okay that meme needed to exist obviously but like you couldn't make it, the, you it couldn't make, make the joke me laugh. In my head. Yeah, no, I, I yeah. get you. I see. I, I can. I can disconnect myself from that most of the time. Yeah, that's what it is. I can't disconnect. So if you see one of my <laughs> memes, just know it made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's fun. It gives gives me something to some, something other than listening to the podcast to do during the day when I'm out walking dogs and you know, obviously, well, like I said, I said before, it, well, while, while I'm driving my car like, too, because you know. I've learned how Jeremy, to do that really it's well. like slamming a posted ad on like the town board. It, it's exactly like that. It, it, it's like it's like a it's like a political comic. If people see it, it's going to change their minds. Hear funny ye, laughter ye. is how you change well, people's minds. Yeah, see, I, yeah, it's funny you said that because yeah, I hear so many people say that you know the people that want to like poo poo the meme makers and say what your memes aren't changing people's minds is like no. Nah, okay, I've had the some CIA impact has with some a of these department. things. For memes, okay, okay, we're crazy. Exactly, the CIA has a department for memes. Exactly, so they 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 do have an impact on people, and they do, and and even if you don't actually talk to the person directly, it's just an idea that gets floated out there. That especially with the way things work, like on Facebook, for example, with the algorithms and how everything just gets, you know, the reach increases by everybody. You know, one person taking a look at it, it opens up the reach to more people on their friends list too, who may have never seen it before, and. You know, some of these things that just explode, you get these things like we had that the ridiculous one that actually one of the last ones we caught a lot of flack for, but also got a whole. I mean, it was, I think it was our first meme in quite a while to get over a million reach in less than a couple of days. And that was yeah. that was the uh, the, so, the 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 plane full of uh, feminists headed to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> Uh, to fight for women's <laughs> rights, to protest for women's yeah. rights. I mean, but like that thing went insane and just that got in front of so many pairs of eyes. And yeah, well, I mean that, and the other, I mean the advantage with memes is it's not you don't have to sit there and read it. You don't have to sit there and and rack your brain trying to figure it out. It's immediate. It, the the message is delivered immediately. Like it has Ooh. impact. Well, if it's done, and, well. it's, and it's two stage. It's two stage as well. It's it's a visual mimetic cue, and it has words in it. It's a where you're. Your, the words, the actual symbols of the words is a mimetic response as well. The symbols, even if you don't register them uh, consciously, subconsciously, they get burned into your brain. So yeah. if you even glance yeah. at a meme and you don't even decipher it with your own eyes, your brain did, and it got burned in there. So be careful what memes you look at, folks. <laughs> so you almost need those glasses from They Live, for real. Hey, <laughs> maybe you should market those and sell them. There's another idea. Meme so, glasses yes. from the Seeds of Liberty. Coming you to you. Go. 999. Made from Chinese okay, Off-level tech. <laughs> exactly. So. With your water. Get them with your water filters. <laughs> and your colloidal and uranium enemas. <laughs> we That's have mimetic that, viewing that, goggles for sale. That needs to happen. Yes. That adder meme needs to happen. <laughs> All right, we so. were going to sell uh, fluoridated waters. Uh fluoride filters if you want the maximum fluoridation you need it. yeah <laughs> not Ten not enough fluoride <laughs> we'll we got you covered your are your teeth falling to shit and back <laughs> yeah. keep, keep away the interdimensional beings by fluoridating yourself with our new flu fluoride water filters <laughs> yeah, yeah. pizza so. gate <laughs> pizza shower gate. not hot enough Zycon B shower filter. <laughs> oh, man. Jesus Christ. Uh, oh, man. All right, listen to the show. On that right. note, <laughs> we on probably should note. get wrapping up. Uh, but before we get going, first of all, David, thanks a lot for coming on, man. This was uh, this was a oh, lot no, of fun. No, thank man. you. And, oh, wait. Oh, uh, Dave, okay, Dave, Dave, the yeah. joke wasn't funny the first two times you tried it. Just give up, man. Just give it it's up. It's still funny to me. That's why. I, I know, Dave. If, I know. If at first you don't succeed, try and try again. <laughs> no, thank you for having me on, man. This is awesome, dude. Uh -huh. I love the show. So being on it is is way cool. Good. good Keep good. up the good work, gentlemen. Oh, thank you. Um, do you want to you, you want to plug you want to plug your stuff before uh, before we get going? Yeah. Um, if you dig the Seeds of Liberty and you want to check out some other Liberty media, check out uh, the Zombies Government News EGY podcast on uh, iTunes, Stitcher, uh, your Android podcatcher, Facebook, Twitter, all all the uh, usual suspects. So, right on. Thank you. All right, uh, Andre, Dave, anything before we get going? 
Uh, no, just, it was a real pleasure talking with you, David. Um, I got a chance to listen to some of your podcast episodes. Uh, the last one I listened to was, uh, by the force ghost of Harambe. That was actually very <laughs> pleasing to listen to. I, I, uh, the conversation you had with, uh, Baron von Stormhaven about, uh, preparedness and, uh, uh, training with, you know, your weaponry to be proficient in use. I actually, yeah. I really enjoyed that. That was a good conversation to have. So thanks thank again for right coming on. on and thank you for being on here with me. I appreciate it. Pleasure's all mine. Uh, Thank you, brother. Th thanks for coming on, Dave. Uh, uh, I always ask a new time guest, uh, or try to, uh, what's their favorite quote? And I'll, I'll, you, you can speak for me there. My favorite quote? Yes. Um, yeah. Ooh. Get to uh, the chopper. <clears throat> Get to the chopper. Um, you know, power Come corrupts on. and at power, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. So, Lord Acton, I guess. Or, you know, rough paraphrase, but. Yes. I think that no, boils down to just about everything that we're about. So, you can yeah. see nope. it as well. Like, it, yeah, you can see it when someone gets power. It's just it's such a dead on quote, man. It really is. Mm -hmm. yeah. I ponder it a lot. It, it's just every so often you're just like, man, I thought he was a good guy, but like, you can't get near the ring and not be evil. Like, it's just exactly. Exactly. That's what I've been telling everybody about Trump. It's like I don't care what he does. You can't get near. <laughs> Look at Frodo. <laughs> he couldn't have the ring. He eventually was turning yeah. evil. And Kokesh is no Frodo, so <laughs> let's wow, just, there's let's your just show get title. that out there. Kokesh Shots is no, fired. Yes, I think that might just be it. All right. Well, this has been the Seeds of Liberty podcast. All of our information can be found on the crappy website known as the Seeds of Liberty dot com. <laughs> and uh, we'll catch you next time. Peace. Peace. Oh. Peace. Are you sick of seeing peaceful people being locked away for victimless crimes? Instead of trying to get out of jury duty, consider taking it so you can do the right thing. A single juror with a conscience can send someone home to their family instead of to a jail cell. If there's no victim, how can there be a crime? And if the judge or prosecutor are keeping you in the dark, what are they trying to hide? You can vote your conscience instead of being a pawn of the state. For more information, Google jury nullification or check out the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that are you tired of elitists who think you need a government permission slip for everything everything you do is an a to b conversation and the government should see their way out of it create true free markets by adopting the bipcot no government license the bipcot no gov license allows user modification of any product service or software except by governments or government agents go to bipcot.org that's bravo india papa charlie oscar tango.org